You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, that comes from the Old Testament. That comes from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. This is what God said to Moses, so that Moses could then relay it to the people of Israel. That's how long ago those words were given to the people of God. So as far as a formula for how to live your life goes, that's a pretty good formula. I mean, it's pretty standard, really. For thousands of years, that formula has worked well in many different world religions. For example, in the, um, in the Jewish faith, the commandment reads like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. In the Hindu religion, the Hindus affirm that one should not behave toward others in a way which is disagreeable to oneself. Buddhists put it like this, you should not hurt others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. And the Muslims write it like this, no one of you is a believer until he desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. Always to go around that commandment. But in the first of his letters in the New Testament, the Apostle John offers us a new recipe for this commandment. This is God's commandment, he writes, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Believe in Jesus, love one another. It's not the same thing as the, Le Le the Leviticus text. It's a new formula. You know, in recent years, companies have tried to change their successful brand. Uh, just this past weekend, I noticed on TV, on the news even, that Pepsi is changing the kinds of sweeteners that they use in their diet, Pepsi, uh, to be more healthy. Well, this April, this month, 30 years ago, Coca-Cola tried that, and they came out with a brand called New Coke. I'm seeing some shaking heads back here. Well, it only lasted three months before they put the old one back on the market. 1,500 complaint calls a day came in to the Coke main headquarters. They even hired a psychiatrist to listen in on the phone calls, and the psychiatrist's evaluation was, these people are acting as if they are grieving the loss of a family member. <laughs> even old Fidel Castro had something to say about it. His attitude was, it is a sign of American capitalist decadence. Lesson learned? Be careful when you go to messing with a brand that is successful. So what, what is the deal with John? What is John up to when he makes this, offers this new formula about how to live as a follower of Christ? I believe he wants to put a human face on love. He wants to put the face of Jesus on this concept of how to love. This, this commandment of love one another sounds all nice and pleasant and has a sweet taste and it's kind of tender, but then when you put the face of Jesus Christ on it, 
It asks you to look at love a whole new way. It asks you to look at love as sacrificial. It asks you to remember that Jesus went to the cross for you out of love. That's sacrificial giving. That's caring more about the other. So along comes John and he changes this formula that people have lived by for centuries, for thousands of years. People have lived by this, yeah, love your neighbor kind of thing. And John changes it when he puts this new line on there, believe in God's son, Jesus Christ. He includes that bitter sacrifice. He's asking us to change our behavior. He's asking these first followers of Jesus to change their behaviors. He says we ought to lay down our lives for one another. In other words, sacrificial giving and sacrificial living is the new formula for being a Christian, for living a life in Christ. And you can't deny it. John asks his followers, how does God's love abide in you? Or how does God's love remain in you? If anyone sees a brother or sister in need and you have what they need, if you don't give it to them, then Christ does not abide in you. God does not live in you. Love is seen in action, not just words. That's this new formula. It calls us not just to think about what we want or what, what, who God is, but to do something about it. I mean, Jesus did that with the rich young ruler. When the rich young ruler says, I followed all of the laws, I say my prayers every day, I do everything I'm supposed to do, now what do I have to do to get to the kingdom of God? And Jesus says, sell everything you have and give it to those who don't. It's a new way to live. It's a new way to think. Love in action, not in words. Last week in, the, in Tom's sermon, he talked about certain love. And in that certain love, you find faith, and you find character, and you find forgiveness. When you find those things and you become certain of the love that God has for you, then you become bold in the way you share that love, in the way you live that love. There's a link in 1 John between what you believe and love that creates a whole new kind of life for us. Paul calls it being clothed in Christ. John calls it Christ life. Well, folks, Coke has decided to try it again. They have offered a new Coke in Argentina. It's doing its test run in Argentina. It's supposed to move into the UK soon, and then when it finishes there, they'll bring it to America, bring it to the United States. And they have a special name for it. It's called Coke Life. It's 89 calories only. And the sweetener used in it comes from the chrysanthemum plant family. While Coca-Cola 
is just now figuring out that it's important to offer life. Christ has offered it to us forever. The Gospel of John that we studied during Lent for six weeks. We look at the way the I am sayings in the Gospel of John. The Gospel says it was written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life and have it everlasting. We're told in the Gospel of John that Jesus is the Word made flesh, the human form of God. And that what has come into being through Jesus' life was life and light to all people. Belief, life, light. That's the new formula. Belief, life, and light. God so loved the world, and you can say this with me, you probably know it by heart, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should have everlasting life, or life everlasting depending on the translation that you're using. That's the formula that's emerging out of 1 John that we are called to live today. We add love in this mix of belief. We add love in this mix of certainty and we become bold. We become stronger in what we say and what we think and how we behave. Life in Jesus' name, eternal life, the light of life, abundant life, the way, the truth, and the life. Can you hear that in the gospel? Life, life, life. That's what Jesus came to give us. Life. Christ life. Not the same old formula that was used by the Jews and the Jewish people prior to Jesus' birth. It's a new one, and it's based on believing in Jesus and loving one another. You have to do both things. Now, there are going to be some who are not going to want to do that. There are going to be some who are like the rich young ruler. Things were just fine, thank you very much, the way they were. Why don't we just keep it the way it always was? Changes are going to be met with resistance. They were met with resistance when Jesus came. They're going to be met with resistance today. But for those of us who dare, who dare to taste, to sip this new formula. Jesus promises us life abundantly. A life that pleasing to God. A life that will draw us closer to God and in turn closer to one another as we live the Christ life. 1 John says, abide in God, remain in God, and God abides in you, or remains in you. To say abides in you, dwells in you, remains in you, means that you are accepting the gift of life that Jesus offers. It means that we believe that we must love one another. And we know that we love one another when our spirit is filled by the Spirit of God. 
when God's spirit testifies to our spirit. You have nothing to lose, brothers and sisters. You have nothing to lose to try this new brand of living the Christ life. But you have a whole lot to gain when you try it. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord chooses to give and the Lord chooses to take away, but always we are blessed to be the children of God. So go and be the church as you believe in Jesus, the Son of God, and as you love those around you. A brief concluding thought. I've told you for four years to go and be the church. A couple of weeks ago, there was a congregation member at an ice hockey game, and a little boy couldn't quite reach the water fountain. And this gentleman, this member of our church, walked over, lifted up this little boy, and helped him get to the water fountain. Christ life. Be the church. Amen. Amen.